Hi everybody, well, welcome back. Um, we will t uh, today we will tackle the last section in chapter 14, what is known as the method of Lagrange multipliers. This is another technique for optimization. However, this is a technique for constrained optimization. What we did in the previous section, section 14.7, one could call unconstrained optimization. And what that means is the following. You were given a function f of x, y, and you simply had to find local extrema. There were no restrictions or constraints on what x and y could be. A constrained optimization problem has restrictions on x and y. You are still trying to optimize f of x, y, but now this will be subject to some restrictions or constraints on x and y. So here is the standard example or the general form of a constrained optimization problem. We want to minimize or maximize f, right? That's usually called the objective function. I don't know if that term is in our textbook, but we're trying to minimize or maximize an objective function subject to a constraint on x and y. And one way to describe this constraint is with this algebraic equation right here. Okay, so in some sense, we're now juggling two functions, optimizing our objective function subject to this constraint given by some function g. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, I'd like you to take a look over here. The white curves indicate the level curves of our objective function f, the function that we are trying to minimize or maximize. So we have four level curves here. The numbers don't really mean anything. Everywhere along here, the function has a value of three. Everywhere along here, the function has a value of four, so on and so forth. Okay, so the white curves are level curves. The orange curve is the graph of the constraint. This is just a curve in the xy plane, g of xy equal to zero. It's just an implicit description of a curve. So let's let this orange curve here be the constraint, okay? Now, I've identified a couple of points here. Could Q be a maximum? Well, to be a maximum, you have to satisfy the constraint, and then f of x, y has to be largest at that point. Well, the quick inspection tells us that Q cannot be a maximum. If I move a little bit, say in this direction, I'm still on the constraint curve, so I'm satisfying this, but now wouldn't I be intersecting a level curve that is bigger than four? I'm somewhere between four and five right here. Okay, so Q cannot be a maximum. I've also graphed the gradient here of f. Remember, the gradient is always orthogonal to a level curve. Observe that we couldn't follow the gradient here because that would take us off of q. Okay, and we need, or excuse me, that would take us off of the orange curve, and we need to stay on the orange curve. So basically, the idea is the following. I want to keep following my orange curve until I intersect the largest level curve, okay? Now that is going to happen tangentially. There's a, there's a theorem that talks about this. I will refer you to it. Um, this is at the bottom of page 809. I'm not going to get too much into detail there, but all I want you to take away from this is the following. We're going to follow the constraint curve until we intersect the highest valued level curve in the case of trying to find a maximum. Well, it turns out this is going to happen tangentially. Do you see that our constraint curve is tangential to the level curve corresponding to a function value of five? Okay. If I'm on the left or to the right of P along this constraint curve, I'm no longer on the level curve z equals 5, I would be on a smaller level curve. So what I can observe here is the gradient of f and the gradient of g are orthogonal 
to this curve and this curve at P. Well, if two gradients are orthogonal to the same thing, they must be parallel. And this is the big realization for the method of Lagrange multipliers. The gradient of F and the gradient of G must be parallel. That is, the gradient of F must be some scalar multiple of the gradient of G. This scalar lambda is called the Lagrange multiplier. This is the main idea conceptually behind the method of Lagrange multipliers. We search for a constant lambda and an ordered pair xy that satisfies this equation. That point is our extremum. Okay? We will look at an example next, and all of this is also in our textbook. Um, we'll look at an example next, but this is the main idea. Looking for this point of tangency between the level curve and our constraint curve. Thanks.